Squeeze between shelves stacked with medical supplies. This is where Michael Steele spent a night in hospital. Do you get all this stuff in behind me? Yeah? The ward notice board records the 63-year-old's location as the stock room. He was kept there from three in the afternoon on the Sunday after Christmas until he was discharged at lunchtime the next day. It was basically a store cupboard, but with a bed, the cabinet and the other stuff and all these things, it was claustrophobic like. The nurses and doctors and even the dinner ladies, they were fantastic. It was the, it's the management and the government who were not planning ahead. It's like you take your car in for service before winter comes to prepare it for winter. They know these people are going to turn up. The hospital concerned at Harlow in Essex has apologised unreservedly, saying we fully accept that this arrangement was far from ideal and not one that the Trust would consider unless in exceptional circumstances. It did, however, allow us to carry on treating emergency patients. So great is the current pressure on accident and emergency departments that today MPs summoned key players to offer their explanations. I'm Dr Clifford Mann. I'm the President of the College of Emergency Medicine. And the man who represents emergency doctors laid the blame at the door of the Health Services Phone Advice Service, NHS 111. Of the 450,000 extra attendances in the last year, 220,000 were advised by NHS 111 to come to the emergency department and another 222,000, an ambulance was dispatched to them by NHS 111. So I don't think we should blame people for attending the emergency department when we told them to go there. NHS England says the 111 phone line is successfully absorbing the rising demand by diverting more people away from A&E, so it's part of the solution, not the problem. Not every patient is as tolerant of this crisis as Michael, as he witnessed personally. Staff were being abused, swore at. There was one nurse, she, she warned one patient about his ear. Michael says he wants his experience to shame ministers and NHS bosses into action. But it's the frontline staff right now who are really feeling the pressure as they care for patients on trolleys, in corridors and even in a storeroom.